This around. You're good to go. Yo, 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 what's going on? Beauty Launch Pad community, Jatai Feather community, Papa and Nobody supporters. We are live. We're about to demonstrate how to, to tell the two sides of the face. You know, it's a lot of shaving going on right now, an old school traditional thing that I feel as an artist, as a barber, has been lost for so many years. But then you have guys that just want to get their beard lined up with a razor. And I'm here representing Feather today, Jatai Feather. And the thing that I'm gonna show you today is how I use different blades and different style of razors and different handles actually to execute what I need to do. First off, I'm gonna give you a little product knowledge. So the first thing I'm gonna use before I start any part of my shave, this is the Jatai Feather uh, Blade Slip, our Blade Glide. What I'm actually gonna do is prepare the skin, prepare the hair. By spraying it on at that moisture, it's gonna equalize the porosity in the hair, which is gonna give me the ability to actually do what it says, glide with the blade, right? So just to prep, come in, always wanna cover up that face, and also make sure you tell them, like, hey, I'm about to spray your face right now, I don't want you to jump. You ready? All right, cool. So from a small, nice little distance away, add that moisture to that skin and to that beard, come underneath, Make sure you have it saturated. Once you have that saturation on point, I just come in and kind of massage that in. Once I massage it in, I allow it to sit for a second as I prepare the razor. Once I go in and prepare the razor, I'm gonna show you guys a couple different handles and why I like the options that I have. If you're a cosmetologist and you want to work with the straight razor but you have the, the restrictions of not being able to go completely on the face or you need a guarded razor, the Nathan Body Feather Razor is a great option for you to use. It is guarded if you could see kind of close. It's a guarded razor blade so you can use that underneath the nape, uh, on the nape and underneath the neck and do some small detail work with it just because of the fact that it is guarded have that ability so it's really light great use for me I have larger hands so because I have larger hands I don't prefer to work with this razor because of that just because I got bigger hands I want to work with a larger tool in my hand something a little more heavier that has a little weight around it especially working that close to the face with a blade that can actually cut someone you don't want to have that loose hand so I prefer to work with something a little heavier now when it comes to the heavier side my razor options are gonna be, today, you're gonna to see probably, I call this the Porsche. This is my Porsche, it's a wood grain handle, Feather DX. And the difference between the DX and what you might see with the SS model. The SS model, I don't have neither one of them. Uh, this is just a DX, both of them. So if you look at the, the handles, they're both are really thin and really come to a point to where that you can put the pressure on the blade and not the handle. Also, when you look at the insert, those two holes are how you allow yourself to slide that razor in, and I'll show you that in just a second. But you pinch, open, and that let that razor slide in and out. Easy, easy cleanup as well. You take it apart, and you just slide it right back in place, and it locks back in place, and you have the control that you need at that point. The reason why I call this one my Porsche or my Mercedes, I really want a Porsche, but. I call it that because of the wood grain detail. This is just a pretty handle that will be a showstopper no matter where you're at. So, Barbers, this is one of my favorites because of the fact it's just a pretty razor. And everybody knows as an artist, you want pretty paintbrushes, right? So this is my pretty paintbrush. The next one, more of a freehand style. You don't have to worry about the handle being in your way. I use this for my beard lineups. So, just to give you a quick demonstration, instead of having that tank, that handle, way out here, I could just freehand and move around freely and do whatever I need without having to worry about the handle bumping the client or any of that other stuff. So you're gonna see me use this on that, on that side of this face today. Now, what I was explaining to you about the blades. This is our Pro Guardian blade that's designed for the DX and the SS model. It has that safety razor, so I'm gonna pull it out for you. 
Notice, in order for me to load the cartridge, I have to pull back, slide forward. If I had that razor blade in front of me or that handle in front of me, this is where that inserts into the straight handle and then I'll pull that out. But we're just gonna sacrifice this blade right now so you can see. So this is the guarded, pro guarded blade for the DX and the SX. I'm not gonna use this one today, but I you know, wanna inform you about it. Also, one thing I love about the feather razors, the cartridge. You know, you always have those big containers or some barbers have different bottles that's not appropriate to have on their station, that's not sanitary to just collect razors. The great thing about the box is that you can go in, slide that razor in after you're done using, falls into place, and once it's done, you can dispose the whole box instead of just having that container full of different razors. Now, another thing, this is the professional razor. Same thing, cartridge slid back, you slide forward, it still has the same inserts. Once again, I'm gonna sacrifice this one. Now you notice the difference from the Pro Guarded compared to the Professional. Blades are really thin. You got some flexibility, but not a lot. Um, and the one thing I love about the blades are they are extremely sharp, and it's gonna give me that precision cut that I need right out the gate. Same thing. Store it in the back once you're done, dispose of it makes it a whole lot easier. Also, if you're, if you're a feather user, you know that feather at first, the, the Jatai Feather Box, we had Japanese writing on it, and now you have the new marketing, the new packaging, which have the English writing to show you how to dispose and how to store and how to insert your cartridges. That's great. Another, you wanna know what type of blades that you need to use because everybody's skin type is not the same. Everybody, uh, hair texture is not the same. You're gonna have a lot of different stuff going on. So the things that you wanna know is, what are your blade options? That's the one reason why, too, that I love my feather blades is because I have multiple options. I can go in and I can use the soft guarded blade. That one was, you'll notice, is in a pink box. It's great for guys who kind of like sensitive skin and the hair course is really light, so you'll go with the soft guarded blade. Uh, and and it, it allows you to do certain things. For me, another service that I like to do, I like to do women face shaves. So we all know that women face shaving, it's been going on for years. If you look it up on YouTube, you can find videos about it. But what it does, it allows a woman to have, you know, that, that fuzz that's normally on their face. You get that all out, the makeup lies a whole lot cleaner. It's a painless exfoliation and hair removal. So that's why I love it, it's an upsell. It's a service that you can stack in six, seven of those a day, charge a lot of money for it, and get paid a lot, but you gotta have the right blade for it. So that soft guarded blade is gonna be the one that you wanna use for something like that. We also still have the light blade as well. So it's totally up to you. Now, this is where, this is where the magic gonna happen. Normally I put my clients to sleep, but he already happened. Uh, he has not, he run before me, right? So, I encourage everyone, that's watching, please ask questions, um, feel free. Like, this is a conversation, this is a class. Feel free to ask questions, even though that you're not physically here with me, you're here with me right now watching. So please, let's talk about it, get those questions up, and hey, let's enjoy this. You ready? John, I got a question for you. It says, can you ask John to show new English packaging of the professional and pro-grad blades? Thank you. Uh, you have that packaging <clears throat> It's fine, we'll get that. We'll get that for you right now. So, I've already prepped the skin. The hair is nice and soft for me. I wanna go in. Because this is a quick demo, I'm gonna show you guys this real quick. I put a little shaving cream on my hand, apply a little of the blade glide on. Notice I didn't cross contaminate. I'll put it on the top of my hand, I'll stand behind and work it in circular motion. What I'm doing is allowing that product to get worked into that hair and soften even more. Take my thumb Slide a little bit, 
right on the top of that mustache. To me, that mustache is one of the hardest places because it dries so quick, but you wanna make sure that you have the right amount of product sitting on that hair still to let it soften. That's one thing I feel like we overuse product when we don't have to. We don't necessarily have to keep using product over and over again. And just take your time with it. So while that sits, I don't like to be messy either. I like to clean it up so I can see where I'm going. And your client will appreciate that as well. So you asked for it, here it is. This is the new blade box. It tells you how to insert and everything right there in English so that we can understand it and so that you can get a full understanding because for me sometimes people don't, don't necessarily understand like what this whole cartridge slide circle mechanism is. So this is how we do it. This is how I'm gonna demonstrate it. There's that prong, I've already slid the cartridge back so that means it's loaded, ready to go to push that blade forward. I take my fingers and squeeze that back side of that blade or that handle, slide in. There it is, it's loaded. I slide out. Before I close up and release the pressure, I like to make sure and tap to make sure that blade is all the way secure. And once I close up, before I do anything else, I close that blade back in. And now I'm ready to go. Traditionally, in barber school, you're taught one, back, uh, two is backhand, three you're coming back, four, five. In salon reality, because I don't think too many people really follow the systems anymore, but salon reality, I like to make sure the grain of the hair is going in the same place that I want to shave. Most clients want that super, super soft, soft uh, shave, and they want you to get it extremely clean, so they'll tell you, my skin can take this, let's go against the grain. For me, I'm only gonna work with the grain and cross the grain to protect my client at all times. That's what we have our license for, is to make sure that we can perform and protect the public and your client is part of the public. So I flip that razor open. Once again, I always talk about my hand size because it's important. Technically, you should be holding that razor, razor with that pinky on the back of the tank for balance, right? For me, because I have larger hands, what's a little more comfortable for me is I shift both hands up, both fingers back, and now I have the blade extended up instead of laying more flat out. For me, this is a more comfortable position. Thumb is underneath, and if you notice, another great thing about the razor, you're working with wet products, so that means sometimes that metal could get a little slippery. Because you have that, you put your thumb right there and you have that ridge, great for grip. Are you guys asking questions? Because I need to know, right? <laughs> so, we got some questions going? Yeah, we got one. Uh, it says, what is the brand of your straight razor? What is the brand of my straight razor? It is Jatai Feather. So if you go on Instagram and look it up, it's at Jatai Feather. You can find the DX, you can find the SS, you can find the wood brand, you can find the pearl, the lime, the wine, whatever you want, they got it for you. So whenever you're doing the shave, take control of your client. I'm gonna like, turn him all the way around and I'm gonna make sure I have that hair pushed away. Notice the product is still on there, nicely saturated, I'll come in. For me, I don't drink coffee and I don't uh, drink a lot of energy drinks, but I always want to make sure that my hand is not shaking. I'm protecting my client at all times, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my thumb and place my thumb at the top and stretch. By doing that gives me the ability to put the straight razor on the top of my thumb and then slide down with my first stroke. So here, my thumb is in place. Thumb is ready, blade is on, I slide down. There's my first mark. Use my towel to clean that up. Now that I have that, I could come back in and stretch completely now. Blade is on a 45 degree angle. Let your blade do its job. Some people like to go all the way through. So I have a rhythm. I could go one, two, three, and then slide. One, two, three, and then slide. Stretch up so I could get a nice, clean, tight shave. And work all the way down to that jawbone.
So there's my first pass. Nice and clean. I got the stretch that I needed. As I worked into two, I work into that cheek area going towards his mouth. I'll turn it and backhand. It's like a tennis racket where you want to just backhand it. Stretch up again. Come in with that top blade, top of that blade, and work your way around. Stretch up. And backhand. Notice I'm not taking big sections. I just works smarter, not harder. And when you're shaving at this point, you wanna make sure that you get all the way close to that chin area. You wanna cover that whole ground. Up, notice I stretched that jawbone area all the way close to me. So underneath that neck is a little sensitive, right? So I always wanna double back and make sure I go back in and apply a little more moisture. I kind of saved the mustache for last. I don't think he wants to lose his mustache today. He might be mad at me. I might lose a client if I cut his mustache off. So we'll still prep it as if we're gonna use it, but we'll save it. Maybe he'll let me. So then I notice I close my razor. I walk my steps, never working past half of that head. I always stay on one side. Normally it's in between his hip and the top of the head. So this is my work area. The razor will be closed. Open it up once I'm in position. I slide over, my thumb is in place. If you have a little moisture in the area where you're trying to grip, just wipe it off. Wipe that thumb to make sure that thumb is nice and clean so that you get the grip that you need. Notice not the Adam's apple. He, his Adam's apple is protruding out. So instead of me fighting it, I'll bring it over to me. Notice I'm not fighting. I'm taking my time, picking out that area. Stretch down. Work up. And some of you are probably thinking, like, where, do, where are you stopping at? So my point of reference to stop is going to be at the natural fold of the neck. Once you hit that natural fold, you've cleared out that bottom area. Now I change back my position and stretch up and come all the way through. Wipe. You see how important that blade glide is? It allows me to continue to work without having any interference. No tug and pull. And I meet where I left off. So I'll take this dry towel and clean out that area. Fold that dirty area up. And just apply that moisture back onto that skin. You notice he's not becoming red, he's not having any irritation. When you have that redness, you have that irritation, that means you're pressing too hard and the skin is not moisturized enough. So that's why it's very important to make sure that you keep that skin hydrated throughout the whole process because you do not want to have that case where coming cross grain. You got any questions out there? No, but Camilio says, amazing as always, John, love watching you work. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Then I'm just detailing out before I actually come back in. 
and do a little cross grain shave. So that skin is nice and clean. You still see some stubble. That's perfect, that's what you want. That stubble you'll get in the cross grain part of the shave. And what I mean by cross grain. So you notice I went down and I came towards the cheek or towards the mouth. Now everything will become cross the grain, cross the face and not having to worry about reshaving that second area. Like I said, you don't want to always take that hair underneath the skin. Hot towel, most important, understand the temperature of a hot towel. The way you check that out, you fold it up, you see the steam happening, right? So inside of your wrist, you stretch, stretch it to feel the temperature. I'll walk it back, fold it into the towel. I'll place it right under his nose, place my thumb in that same exact spot, mess up his awesome hair. And I just let that sit for a second and prep for the skin. So when I started this, I did not do this process because I've already, I already did that. I've already prepped the skin and let everything happen. So now we're doing it again so that we can prepare the skin for the cross shape. Now, in case that you do see some redness, some irritation, that means there's a lot of blood flow happening to that one area. So sometimes a hot towel might not be the best scenario in that case because there's blood already present there. So you don't want to irritate that skin anymore. So what I would recommend is a cold towel. Let that cold towel sit on that face and cool that skin off and calm it down and then come back and do the rest of your cross grain shave. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa says he's a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want, Lisa. You want him to sleep like one too. <laughs> the faster your client goes to sleep, the more money you make. That means they don't remember nothing. I just make sure I clean that area out. Nice and smooth. You should always feel some hair when you go back up and fill. That means the shave is clean going down with the grain, but cross grain, you should not feel any hair. But if you do go up against the grain, you should have some hair present because that means you didn't take the hair underneath the skin. So once again, applying a little blade glide. Once again, making sure that hand is completely dry. Open back up, turn his head, stretch the skin again. And now I just come all the way across the grain, stretching that skin as much as possible. So if we could get a little close up. Sure. You can see what I was talking about. All this moisture here, you see how I'm moving that around? That's all the hair that we missed. By, but by stretching it out and coming across the grain, that's what we get. Coming back up on that cheek, making sure we don't miss all that area. Stretch out. Stretch again. Fold that razor up, come back underneath. Lay that razor really flat because you don't want to have it up, especially on an area that can be so crucial to not just, you know, you don't want to cut your client. Turn your head. So he's nice and clean. Now we're going to step on to the other side. If we were doing a regular shave, I would have to still work from this side of the, the chair, right? And I would have to lean over it and do all of this, but because we're giving the tail of two different faces. Now I'm gonna jump in and show you a different razor blade handle. Now I'm going with more of the straight freehand type handle where you don't have to worry about the tang. 
and I'm actually spinning a little bit. So say you have that guy who has that nice thick beard, he wants to keep that beard, but he wants to just have it more laid out and clean. So for me, when I have a guy like this, his beard starts high so that we could bring out that curvature and allow that, that full definition. I'm sure he doesn't mind that, right? You don't mind that today, do you? I thought you were asleep, see? <laughs> there is no razor in this handle yet. I'm using a clear product, more like a, it's almost like a lotion. That's gonna allow me to get a nice clean slip as well. Also put that protective barrier on the skin. Notice I use my thumb the whole time. So I'm actually gonna let that sit for a second before I move on. No questions yet, huh? Nothing. <laughs> I'm slapping, man. You're watching and no question. Either that means I'm doing a really good job and you're in tune. I think that's what it is. That's what we're <laughs> going to call it. Similar situation. Same thing. Slide that cartridge back. Razors in. Tap to make sure it's in for safety. Before I do that, before I move on, while we have the sign and letting this, you know, product process on this on the face and in that hair, what I want to talk to you guys about is, you know, make sure that you check out your Thai Academy because that's going to be a place where you can learn how to razor cut, you can learn how to do more shaving techniques. Take that time out. Knowledge is power, and in order for you to grow and in order for you to get better with the tools that you're purchasing for your career, you have to have the knowledge behind it. A lot of us spend a lot of time buying stuff and buy it and it doesn't work the way we think it should so we just throw it away and we hate it. So make sure that you get the product knowledge on everything that you use in order to further your career and help you advance really quickly. Lisa asked what are all these products you're using and what are the steps for them? Okay so the first product that I was using was the Blade Glide. The Blade Glide is going to allow you to uh, equalize the porosity in the hair. It's going to soften up that hair so that blade can glide through that hair easily and you don't have to fight so much. Um, part of the process is when you use a hot towel, that hot towel speeds that process up so that you don't have to worry about letting it sit for too long. Then once you do that, you want to come back in and you can feel the hair. The hair gets soft and that's how you know it's kind of prepared and ready. I also like to wait and let it dry up just a tad bit to where the skin becomes tacky. Once it becomes tacky, I have that protective barrier soaked into the skin and I can go in and detail out the rest of that line. So starting out, the way I like to hold this razor, I, notice I moved it away from his face just in case we have a, a funk, right? I put my finger on the back side and kind of tap freehand all the way through so I can create the shapes that I'm looking for. So starting out, I want to make sure I get this detail line in. I'm looking for the most dense area to create that line. And you can kind of see where his dense area is. Right here is that dense area. So we're really just sharpening up a line that's already there. Same process. I start at the bottom of the curve. Come up top. And I just start to stretch. And detail that line out. Notice how I don't have to worry about that tang on the back side of my hand. Everything is easy. Now, I, instead of my pinky going up top, I put my pinky underneath for balance. Especially with me tapping, I want to be able to flick back up and change the angles. So now I stretch here. I'm stretching the skin away from me towards his nose. In. I've already gave myself a point to come to, change the angle, using just the ends of the blade, the tip of the blade. 
You can see how that line starts to detail out. Nothing crazy. I'm not working too hard. Just making sure that tension is there. Stretch again. Notice I put my thumb on top of his cheekbone. Stretch up. Everybody watching right now is like, is he dry shaving? No, I'm not dry shaving. The skin and hair was prepared with clear products so that I can go through and actually see the line that I'm creating. So now I move all the way back up to this curvature. Connect the dots. So we got a question. Does your client typically add this service to their haircut? How much time do uh, you block off to do this service? So I like to book my appointment in 30 minutes. I mean every hour, but I could typically cut hair in 30, 15 to 30 minute blocks. So I always make sure I have enough time for a client that just all of a sudden says, hey, I want to try something new. So you give yourself that window with that hour, but you don't necessarily have to take the hour. The client, for me, doesn't know he has an hour. I know that, but they don't. So it gives you that wiggle room. So always make sure that in your booking that you have that playroom. You could do 45 minutes, and that extra 15 could be that, that extra time. Because you never know, your client might jump in and be like, yo, I want to try this. And you got to have that window because you don't want to miss out on the opportunity. One, to give him a different look and make him feel great about himself. Two, you don't want to miss the opportunity of selling him product, of selling him, making sure that he's using the same products that you're using when he goes home. And that's big key because at the end of the day, if you're using a product and your client is not using it, you don't know what he's using when he goes home. And so if his skin is not healthy when he goes home, and how else are you going to continue to give him that excellent experience later on down the line? Hope that answered your question. I'm just detailing, making sure that every single hair is touched to create the shape. And this is another reason why I love using this style of blade for just my detail work. down and I come back and kind of just brush all that extra hair off just to make sure that I get everything. Instead of spraying directly onto his face, I spray it back onto my hand just to add that moisture. At this point, he should be asleep, so that's why I don't want to spray his face. I don't want him jumping. thing his skin has already been prepared so I'll just put a little bit more moisture right on top of that mustache so I made an executive decision and decided not to cut his mustache off because like I said I don't want him to get mad at me so I have him place his head here extend up underneath that cheekbone and just kind of use it Tap, 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 not going too crazy. Just to give him a small little detail line. 
You notice I have that little hair sticking out here. So I'll stretch and kind of cut that little corner off. It's all in the detail. I think that's why I love shaving so much because it's so detailed and it's therapeutic, it's relaxing. Not just for your client, but for you as an artist as well. So for me, I wanna make sure I get this back line secured and clean as well. Once again, a little moisture. Now I change my body position again and I move back and turn his head towards me so I could see my line of demarcation. Now, if you notice, I'm gonna just show you guys. If I come here, look at that handle. Now I'm, I'm fighting it where I don't have to worry about it. I can see everything and have my hand in a different position. Notice where I stretch his ear, flatten that razor out. You don't wanna come in too hot. And work your way up and around. Once again, I have large hands, so if I stood on that side, I would block my own vision. So I'd rather stand on the opposite side and see over the top of it so that I can make sure I get a nice clean line and I'm not pushing in two. Same thing, kind of with the Adam's apple. You don't wanna, you don't wanna go on top of it. All this hair, my hand is gonna rest and choking. So why not stick my thumb right on that jawline and then flatten out. Now once I get that in place, now I can come in and stretch and work outside of that. There we go. And now you see the tail of two different faces. Smooth shaved side, like I said, real clean, not a lot going on over here. And then you have that razor detail work just to create that design line to help him, uh, you know, keep that beard, but give him that extra time with that. Let's sit you up. Let me sit you up and let's show them what it looks like to do a little naked body on the nape. Notice, safety first, I have the headrest covered. Make sure that you take all the proper steps as far as protecting your client. You see, I have the towel draped on him where the towel is actually touching the skin, not the actual cape itself. Just for time purposes, if I was doing this normally, he would have another hot towel on him to keep him relaxed. And uh, then before the close up the pores, I would put a cold towel on him to finish off with some products that's gonna help him out, which I still will use a little product today on him um, to clean him up with. I'm gonna use a product, a little tonic. Keep that face moisturized and hydrated. Now let's move into the nape. Actually remove, gonna remove the headrest. Now put that towel around his nape, same thing. Blade glide, pull that ear forward. And all I'm doing is applying that little moisture 
just so that I could get a nice clean shave. So this is where that guarded razor come into play. Same way we could pull this out and that'll eject the cartridge out and then we could place another one back in. And if you're looking at, for those packages at your local stores, this is what that will look like. You can see it has the guarded detail on it. So make sure that it's designed for the nape razor. Same thing with the nape. I have him hold his head over, pull that ear forward, and then I stretch and just clean the rest of that nape up. Did you feel anything? He's still sleeping. He said, mm -mm, if you guys didn't hear him. clean all of that nape area. Same thing, I'm gonna come in, stretch. And like I said, because this is a guarded razor, cosmetologist, you can definitely use this. And this just gives him a little cleaner neckline, a little more longevity out of his haircut. Jeff asks, how often do you need to sharpen the straight edge? Other good maintenance tips. So the good thing about this <clears throat> it looks, these actually look like they're non-disposable, but they are disposable razors. And all your razors will come disposable here, where you can actually throw your old ones away in the back of the cartridge and have your new 20 sitting on top. Uh, this is why I love this cartridge because of the fact that you do have the option of storing underneath. Quick cleanup methods, you can get in there, get out. Like I said, same thing, maintenance. You could drop this into your quads container and it just snaps back on. You could clean it up. It's very secure to springs. It's something that I love about them. They're really strong, so you don't have to worry about it loosening up on you don't have to worry about the razor slipping out that spring action is locked in place and as you heard me slide that razor in the top of it you can hear it lock so it's very secure and that's another good benefit and one of the benefits that i covered earlier was the thumb grip underneath where you don't have to worry about having too much product in your hand and not having a solid grip on it another great feature but please visit uh jatai.net and Check it out. Check out as many razors as you can and as you want. Check out all the blade options. I think that's the biggest benefit and features to going with the Jatai Feather Blades is the fact that you have the options for every skin type. You got the Super Blade. So the Super Blade will be that guy that come in and just has that thick, thick, thick beard. And he's like, I'm done with this. Look, I'm tired of blow drying. I'm tired of adding oil. I'm tired of everything that I got to do to maintain this beard. Just take it all off. The Super Blade is great for that. The Pro Blade is great for razor lines. It's great for a complete everyday shave. And I do recommend that you switch that blade out every single client just to have that protection and that safety. Um, the Light Guarded Blade, I think I covered that. The Soft Guard, we covered that earlier. The Pink Cartridge where you could do women face shaves or fine hair, sensitive skin. Those are the blades you wanna look for, the Light and the Soft Guarded. Uh, Nathan Body for cosmetologists. You have the Pro Guarded for cosmetologists as well. That allows you to protect the protect the client um, with that the fact that you do have the guarded area, so you feel more of the more of the guard than you actually feel the razor. Where on every other blade, you're gonna feel that razor. Um, the DX model. Let's cover that real quick. The DX model. It has no lip. It's just straight. You'll see that blade more so exposed than you will on the DX. I'm sorry, the SS. The SS model, you're gonna see uh, more of a bevel where you could apply a little bit more pressure. And what happens is when you apply that pressure because of the bevel underneath, it's designed to put the pressure onto the handle and not the razor blade. Where the DX, you're gonna feel more of the pressure on the razor and not the handle. So if you wanna get that close shave too and feel a little more comfortable with that pressure, use the, use the SS. I like the DX model, um, it's just, Personal, my personal preference, but 
hey, there's many different options to choose from. Before we sign out, make sure you check out me at Insta on Instagram at popular nobody, popular underscore nobody. You want to make sure that you follow at Jatai Feather and check out the academy because it's important to get that knowledge. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just make sure you comment underneath and we'll get back to you. Everybody have a great day.